Christ, Darren. to receive. May God make you're us alive. truly thankful you come to me. and bless us. You come back. I know you're all right. You come home. Andy, you come home to me. You promise that you, you promised you're alive. You'll be all right. Well, I'm starving. You carved the roast beef? I think a man should always do the carving. Is it too well? No, it's just right, honey. Salad, please. Kathy, don't ever marry a man who can't carve a roast beef for a turkey. It's traditional. Charlie's father taught him to carve, and he taught Andy to carve. It's something that's <laughs> passed down from generation to generation. Looks delicious, honey. Well, you like it. Andy likes it medium. There's a fine line there that satisfies everybody. When Andy comes home... Joanne's mother has a great recipe for a vegetarian cutlet or something. She says it tastes just like meat. Oh, that reminds me. Joanne called today. She wanted to ask about Andy. We had a lovely conversation. I, I promised her that when she came home, we'd all have a lovely dinner together. She was full of questions, questions after questions. She wanted to know what we'd heard from him when he was coming home. She, she still wears his ring. She's just mad about him. Oh, please. I hope nobody will give me away. I, I, I indulged in a little white lie. Well, it wasn't exactly a lie. Just, I, I just told her that we'd had a letter. A more, a more recent letter than it actually was. I mean, she was so concerned that... George? May I come in? What is it, George? Oh, Evening, George. What can I do for you? I... I'm afraid I have some sad news for you, Charlie. What is it, Daddy? Sorry, Charlie. If there's anything I can do. What is it, Charlie? What does he want? Give me a call, Charlie, if there's anything. Thanks, to George.
What does it say, Daddy? Andy. Andy. No. Oh, God. Oh, God. No. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Don't do it. You promise. You're all right. I can tell. You're alive. I know it. I can feel it. They lie. on the side. Oh, what kind of a language is it that? Oh, whatever kind it is, it don't apply to you. <laughs> well, you, you could do worse. I have, honey, I have. Yes, sir. Can I see a menu? On the wall, sweetheart. Hey, Ed, here comes Howie. Hi, Rosalie, what do you know? Why don't you shut off your engine and stay a couple of seconds? Nah, I'm running later than hell tonight. Just stopped by for a pack of smokes. Hey, Ed, give me two black coffees to go, will you? Right. Hey, who's riding with you? Hey, don't tell the boss. It's just a soldier I picked up. Bad boy, Howie. You know you're not supposed to pick up hitchhikers. I needed the company. <laughs> Turns out I should have left him on the road. How come? Mm, he's a real weirdo. He hasn't said two words since I picked him up. Not even a thank you. Oh, well, what kind of a soldier is he? There's or ours? Ours. Good. Um, I thought we were being invaded. Here's your coffee, Buster. Come back and see me sometime. Thanks, Rosalind. I'll see you on Friday, okay? Here you go, pal. Brought you a cup of coffee. Jeez.
What is it, Charlie? What's the matter? Go back to sleep. How did you get in here? The doors. How did it open? I'm sure I'm not. That's a great idea, hon. Oh. Let's wait a while, Mom. Oh, but I didn't mean tonight. I meant not until you rested up for a couple of days. Here's your tea, Andy. Nothing for me, thanks. Oh, but, 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 Andy, you, you have to have something. I mean, you're so thin, honey. I mean, you, you must have, you know, had a terrible time. Pretty rough over there, I saw. Over where? Andy, look, I'm not going to dwell on this, but <laughs> do you know that they sent us a telegram tonight? I mean, they actually sent us a telegram telling us that you were killed? They actually said that my son was dead. I was.
Two miles east, and you're right there. picnic and I want to go inside and clean up the kitchen. Mother, join us. No, no, no. You know I can't stand to have a mess. Well, you go ahead and if there's anything you need, you just call me. Oh, Andy, is she still happy since you got back? Well, sometimes I feel like I ought to get down on my knees and pray. Every five minutes, pray all day long. It's a miracle, Andy. A real miracle. Miracle. Poor guy. Any idea yet what happened? Truck driver, wasn't he? Well, what do you make of that, Doc? I don't know. Looks like a needle mark. Could be. Well, you think he was on dope? Ted, don't speculate. Wait till I finish with the autopsy. Boy, they really rip them up, don't they, Doc? They? They? Yeah, they really do. Hey, Butch. Here you are. There it is. Well, what's the matter with you? Well, that's a heck of a way to treat an old enemy. Hm. Just for that, I'll, I'll eat it myself. Morning, Ben. <laughs> Morning, Mr. B. Say, what's the matter with that dog of yours? He didn't bark or nothing, he just ignored me. Yeah, well, he's got more important things on his mind. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's got an upset stomach. Had me a dog once, ate a pickle. Can you imagine it? <laughs> a great big dill pickle. It was yay long, and he got sick. And he threw up all over Marilyn's cashmere ben. sweater. I ben. don't blame me. Ben. What? Take a look over there. Who's that? You got a visitor? Marilyn took in some boarders once. Jeez, what a mess. Ben. They've loused up the whole plumbing system. Ben. What? Andy's home. Andy? Yeah. Is that Andy? Well, I'll just be damned. Now, come on over and say hello, huh? Andy! I'll just be double dog damned. There he is, Andy! Andy, when did you get back? Well, I'm just gonna shake that hand, boy. <laughs> Tell me, Andy, what time did you get in? Huh? Got in Wednesday night, Ben. Yeah? Oh, is that an egg salad sandwich? <laughs> Catherine. Ah, thank you. Uh, now, well, tell me, Andy, what'd you do? Just walk in, scare the pants off your old man? Huh? <laughs> we came downstairs, Ben, and there he was. Hmm. I done the same thing when I come back from Okinawa. I pinned a note on my jacket that said, will you please take care of this poor little orphan soldier boy? And I rang the doorbell. My dad's eyebrows shot clear up the top of his head. <laughs> Kathy, could I have a sip of that iced tea? Yeah, that was quite a war, that World War II. You remember that war, Mr. B? Well, it's not hard I to can't... remember. Hmm. Yeah. We lost a lot of good boys in that war. And we kept some we should have lost. Do you remember old Del Harrison? His folks still live over there in Pine. I was with him the day he got his. That was a sad thing. Of course, you know, his folks, his wife and all, they want to know how he got it, all the details. Well, it was up to me to clean it up for public consumption. <laughs> then there's old Fred Nelson. He's always boasting about his war wound. <laughs> you know how he got his war wound? And him going around bragging like some damn war hero? You know what it was? Some crowd shot him in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> right, plumbing the old pucker. <laughs> hey, Andy, you was over there with old Darren Wilson, wasn't you? How is old Darren? You know, he hasn't gotten off a note to his folks in, in two months now. Now, that ain't right, don't you know? What's the matter? Did I say something? Been through a lot, Ben. 
Yeah. What time did you say he came into the diner? Oh, about, uh... It was 10.30. He was running late. He, uh, ordered... Will you let me? He ordered two coffees and bought a pack of cigarettes. He, he had a... He, he, That's right. He said he had a hitchhiker with him. What did he look like? Oh, I don't know. I never saw him. He never got out of the truck. Did he say anything about the hitchhiker? Any description? Uh, he, he said he was a, 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 a... Oh, that's right. He said he was a soldier. A real weirdo. How he said he didn't thank him for the ride or anything. You know of anyone recently discharged, Joe, or home on leave? Not offhand. Of course, it wouldn't necessarily be a local. It could be somebody passing through. Okay, folks, can you think of anything else that might help us? Anything at all? If you do, would you give us a call? Oh, sure. I can't believe a soldier do a thing like that. And there were severe wounds in the abdominal region. Police report the presence of puncture wounds in the victim's right arm. Police spokesman refused to speculate about the significance of these wounds. Witnesses report that Mr. Stewart, a resident of Waynesville, had picked up a hitchhiker. And first reports from the scene indicate that the hitchhiker... Why did you turn that off? I wanted to hear the news. What's the difference? You can't hear anything anyway. That noise going on up there. Doesn't bother me. Well, it bothers me. It drives me nuts. Harley, you can't expect everything to snap back to normal in just a couple of days. It takes patience and time. Is that what it takes, Christine? Well, I'm certainly glad to know that's what it takes. Everything's going to be all right, Charlie. I won't have it any other way. Why is he so different? Charlie. He won't talk with us. He won't eat with us. He sits out in the yard all day long and up in his room. Why won't he let us tell anyone that he's home? What'd he do, take a bow? Tell him to hear something? He's only been home for two days. I know that, I know that. Whose side are you on? It isn't the question of that. Isn't it? If you cared anything about him, you'd be patient with him. You'd give him some time to adjust. God, with what he's been through, I can't even imagine the terrible things that he must have well, seen. Well, I went through it, too, but when I came back, I didn't act like well, that. Well, you're not Andy, and you don't have the same kind of sensitivity. Well, he's my son, too, you know. He didn't get that precious sensitivity just from you, you know. Well, he didn't get it from you. All you've ever done is criticize him and pick on him and ride him. If it hadn't been for you, he wouldn't have enlisted in the first he place. He enlisted because he didn't want you to turn him into a goddamn mama's boy. And he was right. Well, I happen to love my son, even if you don't. Andy? Andy? Where are you going? Out. You go out. I, I just made supper. Your favorite. Kathy will be home pretty soon. Well, the least you can do is answer your mother! Be quiet, Charlie. I have to go out. Be late, will you, Andy? Dump, dump, growling at Andy. Oh, Christine, it's not his fault that Andy went out. No, it's your fault. He's been home two days and you've made him feel unwelcome. You didn't want him to come home, did you?
Some visitors, Andy. Not now. I think you change your mind when you see who they are. Open up our Andy. Well, listen, what can I get you fellas to drink, huh? Coke. Ah, uh, no, no, beer. Is real. Five cokes, right? Yeah. Andy, how come you ain't in your uniform? Come on, dum dum, he's out now. Hey, Andy, you see a lot of action over there? Kill any guys? Remember me, Andy, Freddie Anderson? I grew two inches since the last time I saw you. You know karate, Andy? They teach you karate? I'm learning it. Yeah, sure. You know, my dad got a Purple Heart in Korea. Yeah, to go along with his yellow streak. You're full of it. I'm gonna be a brown belt before I'm 15. You're gonna be a brown nose, too. Watch this, Andy. Andy! <laughs> 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 Sandra Pitt West and Mr. Montgomery Hunt have announced their forthcoming nuptials. Oh I mean, ain't that a bitch, Mr. B, putting a thing like that in the paper? My. Anyway, 10 to 1 says they already got their nuptials in the backseat of his car. My. Another shot, Mr. B? You know, you keep hitting it like that, it's uh, going to start hitting back on you. Doc. Hello, Mac. Hello, Charlie. What'll it be tonight, Doc? Oh, just coffee, Mac. Black coffee. Did I treat you to a cup of coffee, Charlie? 
Here you go, Doc. <laughs> On the house. Oh, thanks. Say, Doc, did you ever have any nuptials? Well, just once, Mac, a long time ago. Well, I'm sure you were too decent a guy to go around announcing it in the newspaper. <laughs> How's everything, Charlie? Oh, great job. Just great. What's the matter? I lost my dog. Best dog I ever had. He used to love him, Doc. Butch. I'm sorry to hear that, Charlie. What happened? Killed him. Strangled him, one hand. Jesus Christ, Doc. My heart stopped beating. Who killed him? Andy. Andy? I just can't understand it, Doc. I used to love that talk, ever since he was a little kid. I didn't know Andy was home. He didn't want anybody to know that he was here. Why? I don't know, Doc. He's crazy. Why do you say that? You ought to see him, Doc. <laughs> well, maybe I should. Is he home now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd like to talk to him, Charlie, if it's all right with you. Sure, Doctor. If you want to come. Mother, you haven't been listening to anything I've said. I said we're going to double date tomorrow night. Bob and I and Joanne and Andy. Joanne doesn't even know he's home yet. She'll be so surprised. Have you asked Andy? You don't think he'll mind, do you? Butch! Butch! Where is that dumb dog? He's gone. Oh, Mother, that's not like him. You know Butch is too greedy to miss dinner. Give me that! He is gone! And that's all there is to it! I don't want to talk about it anymore. Besides, we've got more important things to talk about. I'm very happy that the four of you are going to be going out. I think it's wonderful. I'm delighted. Catherine, you're, you're really a very thoughtful person. A kind and thoughtful person. Mother, what's wrong? No, nothing. Did you and Daddy have a quarrel? Catherine, don't believe. Anything your father has to say. Don't believe anything he says about me or Andy. Oh, hello. Oh, I, I brought Doc Allman over to see Andy. Good evening, Christine. Hi, Doc. Catherine, I hope I'm not intruding. What do you want, Doc? Mother. I asked Doc to come over. We're going to see Andy. Andy is resting. Yeah, I'll bet he is. I just want to say hello to him, Christine. Charlie says he's not feeling too no, well. You don't pay any attention to her, Doc. This is my house. See you. Welcome home, Andy. Is this a personal call, Doc, or a professional one? Either one. That's all what's needed. Neither one is needed. Well, your dad tells me you got home, uh, uh, what, Wednesday night? Yes. 
You coming with friends? Friends? No, I mean, did friends pick you up, or did you come in on a bus, or...? No friends. But you did get a ride. Yes. Got a ride. Hitchhike. That's right, Doc. About what time was that, Andy? I don't keep very good track of the time, Doc. Oh, it was late, Doc. It was real late. It was about, uh, oh, about three, four o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. You remember who it was that uh, picked you up, Andy? Somebody. Anybody. Remember what kind of car they were driving? Or truck? Oh, why do you ask that, Doc? What difference does that make? Just curious, Charlie. Curious. Well, good to have you back with us, Andy. Charlie, I better be going. Well, come in and see me, Andy, if you like. Shoot the breeze. Give you a checkup. No charge. Hey, that's real nice of you, Doc. Don't you think so, Andy? It's not good, Charlie. At least it doesn't look good. Truck driver was murdered out on the highway Wednesday night. Some witnesses are saying that he was carrying a hitchhiker, a soldier. <laughs> well, you, you don't think that... I don't think anything, Charlie. I'm not making any accusations. That's up to the police, but... Charlie, I've got to report this. Well, what is there to report, Doc? Andy came in Wednesday night, hitchhiking. Now, hopefully it's just a coincidence, but the uh, facts do tally. And what you told me about Butch. <laughs> but Andy wouldn't kill anybody? Look, Charlie, I'm only telling you this because I'm your friend. I really am, whether you believe it or not. I don't want you to think that I'm going to the police behind your back. But I have to report this. That's simply my duty. Oh, I understand that, Doc. Yeah. Look, uh... Why don't you let me talk to Andy? Uh, and, uh... Well... Well, if you give me until tomorrow... I'll... All right. All right, Charlie, I'll wait till tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Doc. Thank
that Andy? Yes, Daddy. He went out the back door. Mother gave him the keys. Christine! Christine! You let him go! Why not? I'd leave too if my father came home drunk. You know why I'm drunk. You know. Daddy, what's the matter? Well, mind your own goddamn business. Sarah, Sarah? Oh. Little, little, this, this, this is to, uh, Charlie Brooks, and, and, and I want to talk to Doc. Doc. Huh? He went to the hospital. Well, uh, we back late? Well, uh, Lil, uh, tell him to call me, please, when he gets back, because it's, I want to talk to him. Catherine? Yes, Daddy? Catherine, uh, I'm expecting a very important call. You tell me. Okay, Daddy.
I came for my checkup. Well, I'm expected at the hospital right now, Andy. How about tomorrow? Now, in your office. I just came by to shoot the breeze. Invited me, Doc, remember? Well, Andy, if you need someone to talk to, I'm more than willing to help. I want you to know, Doc, that I'm in perfect health. There's not a living soul in better health than I am. I don't have to worry about getting sick or old or tired. Or hungry. Or anything. Or maybe one thing. What do you mean, Andy? Feel my pulse, Doc. Andy, I... Feel it. Open it! There isn't any heartbeat, Doc. No heartbeat. You killed that truck driver. I died for you, Doc. Now why shouldn't you return the favor? <laughs> Something dark.
father does the things he does. Why don't you ask him if you want to know? He wouldn't even talk to me. When he finally turns against you, you come to me and expect me all of a sudden to just open up and tell you everything? You haven't come to me since you were five years old. Andy came to me, not you. What is wrong with everybody around here? For God's sake, just the other day we were so happy and now... And now nothing. Good morning. Andy. Oh, you look wonderful. You must have had a good night's sleep. Yes, very good. I'm glad I wouldn't want Joanne to think that I wasn't taking proper care of you. Joanne? Tonight, when you all go out. Was that supposed to be a surprise? I, I'm sorry. What surprise? Bob and I, we thought maybe the four of us could go out tonight. I didn't tell Joanne yet. I mean, that you're home. I thought we could surprise her. You don't have to go if you don't want to, Andy. I just keep thinking about the good times we used to have. Four of us. Seems like so long ago. Oh, Andy, go. It'll be like old times. Old times. That was a long time ago. in 10 minutes. Joanne, will you quit being so stubborn? No, uh-uh. I've had it with blind dates. This is a special blind date. Oh, oh, a special blind date. He's blind, right? Mm -hmm. Joanne, you're just being silly. You always have a good time, and you know it. Oh, right. Like the last time. Well, that was an exception. Oh, he was an exception, all right. Not only was he 400 pounds with a head like an avocado, but his mother followed us to the drive-in, parked right next to us, and kept giving me her popcorn all night. My God, I will never live it down. Never. Uh, no, seriously, you can keep your blind dates. I mean, I'm very happy sitting at home watching The Late Show. And the late, late show. <laughs> and the inspirational <laughs> message and the test patterns. All right, I'll go. Who is it? It's a surprise. He can tell me his name. I mean, I'm rotten with names anyway. I'll forget. No. Listen, he is from this planet, isn't he? I mean, he does have the, the right number of eyes, hands, feet, and other assorted essentials. Well, let's not get vulgar now. <laughs> Listen, at least give me a hint. Just take our word for it. You'll be glad you came. Yeah, if I can live through the suspense. Oh, what time? Is it time to go yet? You are really weird. <laughs> you know that, don't you? Thanks. No, but seriously, about tonight, I really think I'd better bow out. Joanne, why? Oh, I've got a paper to write. Kathy, I get depressed when I go out. You know that. I just keep thinking of... You know. I think it's time to unveil the secret weapon. Joanne, you have to come with us. It's Andy. He's home. I don't believe it. He came home Wednesday night. Why didn't he call me? Why didn't you tell me? Well, listen, son. Doc mentioned something to me last night. There was a man, a, a truck driver, was killed last Wednesday night. And the witnesses said they saw a soldier. Now, not that Doc was making any accusation or anything like that, but he just 
felt it was his duty to go to the police and tell them they had seen me. Now, son, yes, I'm your father, and, and I would do anything in the world for you. God knows I would. You wouldn't be mixed up with any kind of trouble like that, would you? I don't have any troubles at all, Dad. Well, I didn't think you could be, but the doc said something about a soldier. There are millions of soldiers, Dad. Well, I... I told him that. But the... the police are going to be investigating him. They're going to be asking questions, son. And, uh, well, that guy or whoever it was who gave you that ride, are we uh, be able to find him and verify your story if it came to that, couldn't we? It won't come to that, Dad. Well, that's, that's a good son. Good. Well, I'm, I'm going to go over to Doc's. And I'll uh, get this whole thing straightened out. And uh, if he wants me to go to the police with him, I'll go. Made me feel much better, son. Much better. Might be the same one killed that truck driver on Wednesday night. Did you hear about that one? Yeah. Some people down in the colony yeah. house said they saw a soldier or something. No. Hmm? No. Kathy, I'm so nervous. He's gonna be mad. I know he is. He won't be mad at you, Joanne. Do I look all right? You look terrible. Come on, do I look all right? I don't look too old or anything. Just a few wrinkles. You look fine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's just call him. Call him first from somewhere and just check. See if it's all right. Oh. Mrs. Brooks, hi. But you don't know why we're here. How are you, Joanne? I'm fine. She's aged considerably. Quite a few wrinkles. If I may point them out. Bob, is Andy? Uh, he's upstairs. I'll get him. He's really home. I don't believe Joanne, it. Joanne, will you call it dummy? Oh, Kathy, I can't stand it. Sit down. I'll sit. Andy? Joanne's here. Fine, Bob. Let's go.
Have a good time. Sheriff's Department. Yes, sir. Brooksville, 73. Excuse me. Be with you in a minute, sir. Brooksville, 73. Remember this place, Andy? Yeah, it was the first time the four of us went out together, remember? It was on New Year's Eve. Okay, Mr. Brooke. Huh? Go ahead. Well, I, uh... I understand you're looking for the soldier. Killed Doc Allman. And that, uh, other fella. The truck driver. Mm-hmm. Well, I, uh, I saw Doc Allman last night. And then when I heard about Doc Allman this morning, I, I remembered something, something, something Doc said. And I thought, oh, I, I, I didn't know. I thought. I thought it was important. Don, what the hell are you doing? What did he say? He said... He said he thought he knew who the soldier was. Okay, that's two baby burgers, two Cokes, and one coffee. Sure you don't want anything, Andy? Nothing. That's all, then. Thank you. May I have the menus, please? What's the matter? And then we talked about this and that, nothing important, and, and then I remember that Doc said something about having an appointment with the soldier at his office after he left the bar. And what time was that, Mr. Brooks? About 8.30, 9 o'clock. I don't, I don't remember. He said he was going to meet this soldier at his office at 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. That would explain why he didn't show up at the hospital. Did he say anything else about this soldier? Did he mention any names? And, uh... The soldier come from around here. It was nobody local. And how do you know that? Well, the doc said he was from Patterson. Patterson? Yeah. But that's why the appointment was so late. You see, he had to come from Patterson. Was far away. And he probably hitchhiked. I guess he was afraid to see his local doctor. You know, it's funny Doc didn't say call us or mention anything. Sit down, Don. Mr. Brooks, I'm a little bit confused. Did he say anything else? Anything at all? No. Not that I can remember. Can I go now? And thanks for your cooperation. Everyone finished? You still want to go to the drive-in? What's playing? <laughs> Who watches? Right, Andy? Right, Bob. <laughs> That's the Andy I used to know. Hello? legislature met for the ninth straight day in special session in an attempt to come up with a reapportionment plan acceptable to the courts. Senate leader Melvin Potter says no solution is in sight. 
On the local scene tonight, Brooksville loses one of its most beloved citizens, the victim of a bizarre homicide. Here's Ray Benton with that story. Dr. Philip J. Allman is dead. Stabbed to death in his office late last night or early this morning, according to Brooksville Police Chief George Logan. The slaying is Everett County second in three days, and the presence of small needle-like puncture wounds in the arms of both victims have led police to theorize that the crimes were committed by the same person, perhaps raising the ominous possibility of a drug-linked crime spree. The first victim, Howard Stewart, a truck driver, was found on Thursday morning of this week. Witnesses said that Stewart had picked up a hitchhiker, a soldier, and that shortly after picking him up, went down the road to buy coffee. And now, back to the... Andy! Andy! Were killed in a freak Where's Andy? Where's Andy? Where's I've got to talk to him. Your it's very fault, important. Your fault! Your fault! Oh. Your fault! Your fault! Listen, Andy's in trouble! He killed Doc! The truck type. It's your fault, Charlie. It's your That's fault. Listen, I went to the police. But I didn't tell them anything. I lied to them. I made up a story to throw them off the track. But, but they're sure to find out, Christine. And they're going to come here. Jesus, I just... I couldn't get myself to turn on it, Christine. I just couldn't. <laughs> you know what we're going to have to do, Charlie? We're going to have to take Andy away. Far, far away. What? How are we going to do that, Christine? Nothing else we can do. You lied to them, too. They'll be after you. But if we stay here, they're going to be after all of us. There's nothing else we can do. Now, I'll go upstairs. And I'll pack some clothes. We can't take very much. What about Kathy? Kathy? A lovely person. A kind. Thoughtful. They look, they look so adorable tonight. Just like when they were in high school. Who? <laughs> it's like old times. Seen them. Bore them going out. Before them? And he's with him? Where did they go? Where did they go? Mm -mm. God damn it, tell me, where did they go? Dancing. Dancing. Where? The Lion House. <laughs> Get some popcorn. We just ate. I'm neurotic. I can't watch a movie without popcorn. Oh. The hogs are jumping up. Fifteen seconds from now. You two want anything? Oh, um, just something to drink, I guess. Okay. I, I hope you're not mad or anything. I mean that we barged in on you. 
I'm not mad. Or anything. I just really wanted to see you. I missed you a lot, you know? When you stopped writing for a couple of months, I used to call your mother every day. I know she thinks I'm crazy, but... But I want, I want you to understand that if there is somebody else, I, I understand. No one else. Well, maybe we can pick up where we left off. Open up. Uh, I hope we're not disturbing anybody. Are you two all right back there? Charlie! Charlie! 
Well, you can't. No, he is. I suspect it's Andrew Brooks, That's 312 Brooksville. Andy's home. Some boys never come home. 